hi guys welcome back to my channel um i miss you guys it's been a while um i'm gonna be doing a story time today i had to give myself a lot of courage just to do this video because um the past few days has really been emotional for me because um today is june 17th um 2020 june 19th 2020 i was admitted in the hospital it was a really um difficult day of my life um on the 16th of june um 2019 um i moved from dubai to paris so um on the 17th was my first day in paris my husband had to go to work because um i actually moved from dubai to paris because of my husband's job i love my husband so much so um even though it was a very quick decision on the side of his job to um, switch country uh, my husband is also french so um basically he was coming back home and um i came with him so on the 17th of june i was um thinking about so many things and um I was thinking about Dubai. I was thinking about the life I built there. I was thinking about so many things um, that happened in Dubai. So I had like, I had like the most crazy panic attack. I had the panic attack that day um, when my husband came came back from work. I was it's, it, I've been to Paris before. Then I was in Paris in 2018 for vacation, but coming for vacation and living in a place is totally different. So I was kind of like processing it that day. I was kind of like, it's my first day moving to, to this city. So I was thinking so much. And what was even more emotional was that it was one day, um, to my birthday so basically tomorrow is my birthday june 18 i'm making this video right now on the 17th of june so um so then in 2019 the, the next day was my birthday so i was having all sorts of emotions sadness of moving happiness that i'm grateful i saw a new age so i had a panic attack i had a panic attack the um ambulance came my husband called them and they took me to the hospital they took me to the hospital and the next day was my birthday so i was saying to myself oh my god you cannot spend your birthday in the hospital it's it's really not a good sign to start a new age it's not it's not the way to start a new phase so i started to tell myself you need to feel better you need to feel better you need to feel better so I I asked after they gave me drugs, they, they saw that I was fine. I was just having like a really serious chest pain from my panic attack. I begged and um, with my husband saying to them I'm fine because they were really at the hospital. They were really worried that um, I'm going to be sick. So they wanted to keep an eye on me. So finally, we came back home. We came back home um i had um my birthday the next day i didn't want to bother my friends telling them i was sick i had one friend then an ex-friend so this was the one person i i had the courage to to send this picture to because i had a picture um i asked my husband to take me a picture when i was sick so i had like all sort of machines connected so i had um all of these machines connected to me um when this picture was taken and um when i look at this picture right now i cry so much so i sent it i sent it to my friend just to tell her i was sick because this was a friend that um we were pretty close in Dubai. 
this was a friend that i mean i've not i've not known her for so many years um and uh but we we grew a bond quickly and um it was like it was like a love aids kind of bond and i feel so sick that i didn't see i didn't see it especially when when i saw the signs i feel sad that i didn't take the action so this was the friend that she sent me a video while i was there i was at the airport she was crying um you inspire me you inspired me so much um because i i helped her in terms of modeling in dubai i was living there and she moved to dubai so she was like oh you inspired me so much um um i'm gonna miss you you're a strong person she sent all of these amazing um, voice notes to me so i was like okay i don't want to bother all of my friends but i can i can just send it to her since um we are currently speaking and we spoke yesterday we made a video yesterday while i was at the airport so i sent her the picture and she pretended to sympathize with me funny enough uh months um later me and this friend had a fallout the same month of my birthday june and months later i found out that she was spreading all sort of rumors about me aside from spreading all sort of rumors about me this was like total big betrayal and i don't i don't really believe in gossip i just believe that everybody kind of like you but i really do not believe in gossip but this was far from gossip because i had a video she sent me being all you inspire me i love you so much you're amazing and i had a video and a voice note of her saying to another person who knows me how i'm a horrible person how she hates me how she's happy i'm gone and it was wow i was pretty i was pretty broken my move was my move was um my move was very difficult for me i just moved to paris um i was modeling before coming to paris starting modeling year again um i had a business before in dubai setting up my business here managing my business in dubai managing my business in nigeria i don't speak french trying to live by myself when my husband is at work going to the supermarket even was difficult everything was difficult for me at that time so i went into a very deep depression i'm gonna go back to my story a little bit why was this move difficult for me it was not my first move at the age of 20 i decided to move to dubai because um i've been trying uh, modeling in nigeria for a while i've been looking for international signing and um i couldn't get an international signing while in nigeria since i was 17. um i represented nigeria in malta europe um in a modeling contest so i've been to europe before so i wanted to have an international career so while i was in malta god bless my friend lenka i met my friend the traveling beauty queen she's from if you follow me on instagram i'm sure you've seen me um with my friend the traveling beauty queen so basically she told me about um dubai and i visited in 2016 i came for 10 days um actually i didn't stay in dubai i stayed in the place called charja so charja is another emirate but very close to dubai like 40, 40 minutes by train so i got an, an accommodation there with an amazing nigerian friend may so rest in perfect peace he died in his apartment not when i was there but um there was a fire in his building like months later like way way months later and he died with a visitor may so rest in peace i just want to highlight um few moments of my life in dubai so 
basically i came for 10 days and in 2016 and i went back to nigeria i went back to nigeria things in nigeria was pretty tough for me um i was working as a waitress i was also working as a model and um it's a big move so i need to save up as much money as possible finally in 2017 i was ready for this move so i want to speak about um someone who also touched my life deeply the dubai travel connect his name is richard he has this um, visa page we are very good friends now i remember i didn't have a lot of money uh, when i was finally ready to move richard did my visa for me on credit and um we agreed that when I come to Dubai, I'm going to pay him. So I have money to cover my rent with my friend Lenka. Because Dubai is very expensive and um, not many young people have apartments of their own. So when you live with people, you have to pay. So they refused to do my residence for me. They lied about so many things. So I was like in a very bad situation. I didn't have a visa. I had to go to another country close to um, united arab emirates which is uae to renew my visa the renewal process was very very difficult because i got scammed along the way and this was the first time i was actually making the fashion week so um, i had fashion week coming up if i go to nigeria to renew my visa which is my country it would take longer days because the flight is longer the process is longer and i would miss the fashion week so i went to oman uh, it's a process that they do in dubai it's called visa change and it was it was like always easy to do but you know how bad luck works sometimes i had such bad luck that period the guy who did my visa who does my visa was scammed by someone so basically i was scammed and finally god came through for me where we were in oman we were living in a very shitty place um people saw how i was crying every day for four days normally the visa change takes the visa change takes it takes like one day you come to oman and you go back to dubai the next day that's that's how long it takes but because of the scam involved, because my money was gone, this person is nowhere to be found, no visa was applied for me, I was stuck in Oman. We were living like, we were like 50, 80 in like a very shitty shelter. So it was not even a proper place for anyone to stay. So I was crying every day and the owner of the shelter saw and... People also spoke on my behalf. Oh, she's a girl trying to model. She has a show coming up. If she doesn't go back to Dubai, she's going to miss the show. This person applied the visa for me on credit. And after my show, when I go back to Dubai, I will pay him back the money. So this was how difficult my life was in Dubai. I know that I cannot fully say all the story in um, on video right now. But I had very very difficult days in dubai oh my god i had days that i could not eat but god saw me through modeling started to pay off everything started to work so well from 2017 until 2019 so i met my husband in gen, gen uh, may april 2018 um, I was already living comfortable. I already invested some um, money in a business in Nigeria. Life was going great. So it was a good time to have a relationship. I had a name in Dubai. I was booking jobs. I had my own clothing brand. So I had a business in Dubai. So I did my residence. And the residence was for two years. And love with me and my husband happened so fast and we got married in um, january 2019 we got married in january 2019 and um, one day in may um he came home and he told me that um, his company 
and just asked him to move to France, Paris. Oh, we were supposed to move, no, in March. The news came in in March and they were asking him if he can move in June. It was too sudden. It was too sudden because it was a moment in my life where I have suffered a lot and I was beginning to rip from I was beginning to reap from what I sold, meaning all my hard work was beginning to pay off. You know, when you go into a new place, especially when you work in the entertainment world, you need to um, know a lot of people. You need to work to a certain extent. Your portfolio needs to speak for you. So my portfolio has started speaking for me and this move happened. Meaning I've done a lot of job in Dubai and I, I'm, I'm getting referrals. Agents were booking me for more jobs. So I'm like, no, this is, this is not the time where I want to move. I just started a brand here. People are buying from my brand. Everything is going perfect. See, I just did my residence. My residence was like six months. I just had, like, I've, had, I've gone through all this phase of visa change, visa changes. And finally, when I have a residence and I could finally leave in the city peacefully, I got married. And now I have to move. So basically, when you get married, you get um you get um free visa if uh if the the spouse already has residence, you go under their visa. But I didn't get mine from being married. I got mine on my own. I was single when I got it. So I was single when I got it. It was so expensive paying for it because everything about Dubai is money. It was so expensive paying for it, but it was worth it because going for the visa change, going through the stress, it was too much. And sometimes you can get certain jobs if you don't have the residence. So I, I, I really, I was really like, oh my God, I just had this residence. I paid for it for two years and now I'm moving and I'm not going to even use the residence. So it was breaking my heart also the the fact that i would be closing down my business which i didn't close close it down my business still runs in dubai but um even though it still runs in dubai it's not it's not going as great as it should have if i was living there so i was i was going through all of this this is why my move to paris was very difficult for me my first my first one month in Paris I was so depressed. I don't think it's I don't think it's one month. I think it's actually three months. For three months I was so depressed. It was one of the most difficult three months of my life. And to make things worse, I had friends in Dubai. I had people that I thought I was gonna miss. I had people that um I shared so many experiences with so many memories i thought that okay having um regular communication with them on phone would keep me sane and would help my transition the fact that i'm still connected to all of these people that i spent so much time with but life surprises you well i was having a difficult time and i don't know i think god wanted god wanted to shift me so god opened my eyes to see so many things so when i moved to paris i was complaining all the time oh if i was in dubai it would have been better if i was in dubai i had people if i was in dubai it could have been this it could have been that but no everyone gave up on me god started to show me that whatever job i had in dubai whatever friendship i had in dubai whatever sentiments i have they they were of no value because everybody left me alone i was basically like alone i was basically like broken i had just few people by my side the people that were very close that i didn't expect would turn their back on me they did turn their back on me um i i don't i don't see myself having friends who are models anymore in the near future naturally i don't see myself having female friends in the near future and my my experiences um those three months my deep depression just made me realize that i had to wake up and i had to 
make my life work wherever I am. I have the power to do it because I was breaking down all the time. Um, you know, something very, very hurtful happened to me. So I had a friend in Dubai who basically um, got a lot of modeling opportunities through me. Uh, Business-wise, she saw how many businesses I run. She knows how strong my work ethic is. And um, she got lots of business advice from me. Um, so one of my depression days, um, after I was sick, after I sent this same person my picture of me being sick, after I found out that she tries to turn everyone on me, she sent people uh, messages, how she hates me, how I'm horrible, because people love me naturally, and it's just a gift. It's just how, it's just how God destined certain people. So this person was trying so hard to bring me down, so we, we were no longer friends, so I approached her on Facebook to say, oh, you keep spreading all of these rumors about me, please stop. Um, we don't have to be friends anymore since we're not friends, but we don't have to bring each other down. And because she knows that, she knows that, um, she knows that I'm gonna see the post, she made a post just so I can see. And on this post, she wrote, when you, when you move to a country to settle down with an old man, um, why won't you have the time to stalk me? Bitch, I am working hard where I am. I don't have time. So she made this post for me. <laughs> oh my God. What is funny is this is the same person who literally knows how hard I work. This is the same person that I don't want to brag. Like I really do not want to brag. I don't want to brag at all. This betrayal, in the beginning, it hurts me. It broke me because even though we were no longer friends, I really genuinely love this person. So how, how the reason she hates me is because I work so hard. She hates me because I get everything. If I set my mind to things, I get them. This is why she hates me. So how can you hate me because I'm hardworking? And you still write a post about me on your social media just so I can see. And you still talk about me that I'm not hardworking. It was so funny. It was so funny that sadly, everything I do, she does. So I started working. I started, um, I, I, st I started working. Um, life is so good now. Um, everyone who told me, oh, your move is going to be easy. Don't worry. We're going to text. Actually, no one texted me. So I just had to realize that life goes on. And since, since Dubai, I really don't, I really don't put things in, in acts so much. Um, I, I know that betrayals are things that will always happen in life. And I started to focus on change. And yes. My life has changed ridiculous. Like, my life has changed amazingly. Like, insanely changed. Um, I have the most blessed, blessed, blessed people in my life right now in Paris. In Dubai, I had very blessed people in my life too. I just focused and spent so much time with the wrong ones instead of the amazing ones. Now, when I look back, I, I regret all the good people I could have spent time with and I didn't. So that helped me in Paris to choose who to spend time with, to choose what to do with my time, to not take things at art so much because I'm a very, very emotional person. And um, I, I genuinely bring people into my life very, very quick. So my move taught me a lot and um, I don't know. I, I just feel like I'm not expressing, I'm not expressing how I feel in this video as possible. But my purpose of this video is to encourage someone that betrayals will always happen in your life. 
you will always be broken at one point in your life. Any time in your life that you lose everything, watch your life. That is the time in your life that God is opening an amazing opportunity for you. But many of us as humans have been there. I, I like I've literally been there. We don't see the future. We just see the present and we don't know what the future holds. So we deal everything in the present. We judge everything in the present. But trust me, the future is always a beautiful place. We just have to give it a chance. And I am really, really happy that I'm no longer depressed. I'm really happy that I gave the future a chance because if I didn't give the future a chance, many amazing things happening in my life right now. I thought my career was so amazing in Dubai and my career is twice, thrice, I don't know, whatever times we can do better in Paris. Change is good, especially when it's, when it's destined by God. My change took a lot from me and my change forced me to demand to demand being the highest version of myself from myself. And I just want to say to someone, do not give up in life. No matter the betrayal you face, no matter the hardships you face, no matter the situation you find yourself, do not give up. Life is always bright and beautiful on the other side. Um, three months ago during the quarantine, I started a business and this business has earned a lot. It has earned a lot. And for me, I don't know, I started to make money quite early in my life and I stopped putting so much value in money. I stopped putting value in anything I do. I try to ask myself, how many people's life would this touch? So this business touches a lot of life. So it means a lot to me. What is funny is when I started, um, I asked three people to partner with me and they all rejected because they didn't see the future. And right now, my partner and I, we are benefiting so much from this business. So it was just another reminder for me that in life, we just can never give up. If people tell you no, because people gossip you, because people betray you, because people stole from you because people break you because people hurt you or do whatever to you it doesn't mean you should change who you are it doesn't mean you shouldn't keep moving in life no matter the situation you find yourself you're depressed you're in a sad place you don't know how to figure out your education your career you don't know how to figure out things in life you have to keep moving you just need to take a step when I look at myself right now, I would never believe that I was a girl who was homeless. I was a girl who my family could not afford an education. I was a girl who went to Dubai. After three months, I was stranded, had no visa. I was a girl who was waiting tables, working as a model and working as an hostess, three job in one. And while being that girl, while being in my suffering, I paid my dues in kindness. I helped and helped and helped as many people as I can, even in my little. And sometimes when I look at the grace upon my life, I just realize that kindness and giving, you might not, you might not rip from it immediately, but it will surely eat you. You will, you will definitely give us never lack. The Bible said it. So I just want to tell you guys, no matter where you are in your life, no matter how small you have, there's always someone who needs it. It doesn't matter if they cannot repay you back. It doesn't matter if in future they would hurt you. Just help people. Just help people. Just spread kindness around. Just Give freely. Give everything freely. Because God would surely bless you from it. Oh, I feel so blessed today. I'm going to show the slide of my picture June 17th. I was literally sick. I was having panic attack, depression. Today... 
I'm so beautiful. I have so much light and so much joy. <laughs> I can't believe this. <sighs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Lots of love, lots of lights. Please do not give up. Au revoir.